Um, first off, it's a blessing and an honor to be back here in Mexico, Kentucky, playing in the one and only best place in the world, Rupp Arena, uh, with the best fans in the world. And, you know, it was a it was really fun to be able to have a chance to go out there and play with the, the present, the, the present and the past. You know, it's awesome to combine, uh, you know, just timelines and, you know, when you're playing with some of the greatest players in UK history, like Rex Chapman, and um, you know, I mean in all sincerity, you know, when you're playing with some of the greatest that ever played this game and, you know, you're just leaving here and you're getting a chance to just be on the court with them, it feels like, you know, uh, you're watching a, a UK all-great team. And uh, I'm just honored that uh, Coach Calipari and you know, the University of Kentucky and Pro Camps uh, looked at me as one of those players to represent the university. First question up front, Carl, you had a, a pretty significant day. You, you put out a, a letter. Um, you wrote some stuff on your shoes tonight for the game. What, I guess, moved you to, to speak up, and what has the reaction that you've at least seen or heard uh, been like since, since that all got put out? Um, you know, for me, um, so the article was mostly, you know, it was birthed just by me. Just, uh, you know, I always seem to take the, the safe road, and, uh, which is more of just stand back, you know, talk to my friends and kind of do what I did in an article, but just privately. Um, and you know, uh, sometimes you always worry about what people are going to say. And you always try to be in the right all the time. And you know, I wanted to do something that meant something a lot to me. You know, that's a, there's been a large moments in, a, in the USA's history so far recently. And uh, you know, I, you know it's, it's when you live in this time, you want to make sure that you don't have history repeat itself. And I felt that with the platform that I have and um, everything I learned, you know, how to use my voice effectively here at the University of Kentucky. Uh, you know, while in the NBA, I felt that I could do something positive for the world. Um, you know, and I, and I was just sitting back and I'm thinking, and uh, I remember just, you know, you know, first thing you always do when you write an article like that is you think about all the consequences and the backlash that will come from it. And the first thing when I thought about all that was, you know, maybe I shouldn't do it. And you know, that's exactly uh, I think what uh, people wanted me to do, and I uh, decided to go the route that I felt was right. And um, you know, I wrote the article, I, took, I put my passion, my soul, uh, my feelings, my ideals, my values, my morals into there. Um, you know, I wrote that, I took my time. You know, I, I didn't uh, rush to write it. I, I, I very much took my time with the article. And uh, four drafts later, um, you know, there it goes, to what you saw today. Um, and you know, the responses have been very positive uh, for the most part. Um, you know, obviously the same thing is, uh, you see a lot of times I talk to people today is, a lot of people keep saying stick to sports, and if you read the article, the last paragraph literally states with that that whole reply, stick to sports. You know, I think everyone thinks we're athletes, so our intellectual capacity is not, uh, you know, is not enough to understand topics or not able to verbally explain or your feelings or what you feel about the topics. Um, but that's not true. Uh, there's a lot of our, us athletes. I think a lot of us are very well educated. Uh, I think that we all have a, a spot in our heart that we feel that we could uh, fill with, you know, trying to knowledge, uh, give knowledge to other people, uh, tell people how we feel. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong uh, or soft about letting people know how you feel. Um, you know, I just wrote the article, not more to bash anybody, not more to say Trump is this, Trump is that. That was not the case at all with the whole article. The article was meant, when I wrote it, the intention is, to spread love, you know, to say how racism, bigotry, uh, gender equality all can be fixed with love. And uh, it seems that a lot of times in life when you go to work, you know, you look at your kids, um, you do anything in life, you always seem to do better when you put love into it. I, I feel that one of the biggest components that gives me an advantage over my opponents is the love I have for the game. Nothing about talent, nothing about mentality, it's just straight love that I have for this game. Um, and I'm very um, blessed to lace up my shoes every single day. And that's how I feel when I step on the court. So I play very free. I play very relaxed with a, a sense of, uh, of humbleness. And, um, you know, that's what the article is about. Just trying to spread love, make a conversation. I want people to talk to each other about their to the topic. I want them to think about what they say, uh, think about their ideals, and, uh, you know, just have a conversation. We can make each other better. We talk to each other with respect and love. And, we very much like that in humanity today. Take that, that. <laughs> Carl, Carl, one thing that stood out in the article was when you said 
the, the thought, the realization that it could have been you in one of these situations where you got shot. I'm wondering how that awareness came to you and how much do you think it would help maybe bring some humanity to all this if people, if it was brought home. I think that, you know, when you're a minority in this country, I think it's just, you just feel like it could be you due to the circumstances. Uh, you know, a lot of times we see good at this, incidents are coincidences, and I don't think a coincidence could happen you know, six times in a row. You know, that doesn't, that's not a coincidence. That's something that's truly happening. We haven't taken realization of it. So, you know, obviously, you know, you realize, you know, uh, when, you, when I'm writing an article and I'm just thinking about, like, this before the article, I'm just thinking about, you know, what happens if I wasn't notarized for playing basketball, you know, almost kind of given the, uh, the second thought, you know, not the first thought. And then you say, well, you know, let me think about it. He is playing basketball for the Timberwolves. And then your second thought is the more logical thought, you know. I'm very fortunate, I guess, to have that. But, you know, for a lot of uh, minorities in the, in the country, and not, and not only the thing is the minority, the thing is everybody. I think it's also, you know, whatever color you are, I think that there's a, 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 a how you say, it's like more of a card you're given, I guess, for being, you know, finding success in your life, you know? And I think everyone's destined for success. I think everyone in this, Media room is destined for success. I think everyone in this building is destined for success. I think everyone in Lexington, everyone in uh, Kentucky, even Louisville, I think I have. Yeah. I think that even they are destined for success. I think it's just more about, you know, everyone has a different timetable. You know, for me, I've been very fortunate to have a different timetable. And I found my success early in my life in playing basketball. And, you know, there's been a lot of times I never thought I would be successful in basketball, and I did. You know, so everyone just has a different way. I think everyone's journey has the same kind of path, but it just depends where the bumps come from. Um, you know, so you know, I'm just trying to live my life to the fullest, um, trying to give back as much to the fullest. Because you know, I want to have, I want to have my kids. You know, I want to have my kids when I'm very fortunate enough to have kids. You know, I want them to feel safe in the streets. You know, I don't want them to have to have a second thought. And I, I really would love love like my dream is to avoid that conversation with them about uh, the skin of you know the color of their skin. Any other questions for Carl? Um, Carl I want to just mediate to come back to my play with some old teammates and other I mean it was it was very, very, very special. You know I'm, uh, I love my brother Trey Lyle so when I get a chance to see you man. <laughs> man. So you know when I get to be with him and play in the court with him and Tyler Eulis and Alex Poitras, you know, it's just, you know, it brings back so many memories, you know, and um, I think the fans, again, get to see today, even, you know, three years out, that, you know, that unity, that camaraderie we have, and that sense of team is still there, you know, the little things we do, you know, we just know each other so well, um, and that's what made us such a special team. Um, we truly give, gave everything we had for each other, uh, and, um, you know, uh, when you're unselfish, it seems that a lot of great things happen for you. And uh, I'm just so, uh, it was so fun to be back out there and rough, you know. Uh, you know, I remember when I was stepping on the court today, I'm just looking up and just remembering all the games I played here. And, um, you know, just thinking about all the fans and seeing everyone scream. And, you know, we make a label, we get a big time dunk. And just running that court, you know, it's, uh, it's very majestic. You know, I've been fortunate enough to do a lot of things in my life. You know, All-Star Weekend and Rookie of the Year. And, state championships in high school, but nothing like compares to the experience and that like, feeling when you come to Rupp. Um, I remember talking to somebody off the road. Lexington just has a, sort, a certain aura. You know, there's, there's just something different in the air than anywhere else in the country. For all, how much convincing did it take for them to get you to shoot a commercial where you talk about not finishing a perfect season? It was rough. <laughs> I would lie to you, it wasn't rough, but you know what, I have a, absolute great partner in, uh, in Gatorade and just to have them um, do it in such a respectful way for me, you know, very make it, try to make it as, much, as easy as easiest as possible for me to do. Um, you know, it, it, it just speaks volumes to the partner I have and the brand and company they are. Um, I was very fortunate to, uh, and, you know, when you do a commercial, it could take hours, you know, take after take after take. Uh, they knew how uncomfortable I really wasn't wanting to talk about that, so I, 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 I tell you now, that commercial took about three takes for 10 minutes, and that was it. 
and that's what you saw on TV. You know, we I did not want to do that too many times. I was very right to the point. I want to get it done, and I want to do it over. Was there as much convincing in being in the Katy Perry video? <laughs> Um, that was a fun one. Um, riding home from work, uh, working out, and got a phone call and asked to be a cameo and of the day of the music video shooting. And I said, sure. I have nothing to do that day. So uh, it's funny. It worked out. It was very fun. You know, I have, I love being able to show my personality a little more. I like being goofy and funny. So um, it was really fun to be part of it. And, uh, you know, Katie's a great woman. And, uh, Got to really see her in her uh, own habitat. Last one, then guys. Have you gotten a chance to look at uh, this year's Cats team yet? Uh, I think I have. I got a chance to see them. Uh, I think they're going to be uh, very good, and I think they're one of the best fast break teams I've ever seen from a Kentucky team. So um, they have so much athleticism that's just pure. You know, that's they not even understanding how to truly use their bodies fully. Just so much athleticism, so um, you know this Cats team is going to be—it's going to be very high flying. They—they they have that kind of athleticism, uh, not only just in jumping high, but just running. You know, they—they they all could run down the court at extreme high speed and uh, be able to finish through contact. What are some of the players you'd say to watch specifically, at least that you've seen? You know, that's the thing. I, I think that we always get caught up with seeing players. You know, but with our team. You know, we never talked about players to watch. We were a team to watch. You know, they just have to be a team. They got to understand that this 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 game is not high school no more. This is this is the next level, and the next level requires even more of a, of a team basketball. You know, one on ones don't work the same way. You know, it has to be a, a team effort. Um, so, as you say, players to watch. I'm looking at as a team to watch. I think that if they could come together, put the egos aside, put the I'm the man. A mentality aside that each of them have respectively because they all were the man in their respective high school programs um, you know they could be something truly special and someone we could be talking about for uh, years and years to come thanks Carl